ان الحمد لله الصلاه والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ذا لايف اوف ابو بكر رضي الله عنه what a man this man was what a role model wallahi all we can say is what an amazing man umar radiyallahu anhu had such a famous saying whenever abu bakr radiyallahu anhu was mentioned whenever he remembered one of his virtues or his actions or sacrifices he used to say oh abu bakr you have made it very very hard for those who come after you he surpassed everyone in generosity he surpassed everyone in modesty he surpassed everyone in salah he surpassed everyone in qiraat al quran he surpassed everyone in everything and that's why ali radiyallahu anhu said about abu bakr if you think about something good then abu bakr would have already done it my brothers abu bakr radiyallahu anhu was the first man to accept islam the next day 24 hours Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu had already started working in da'wah and serving the deen of Allah. And who did he bring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He brought mountains, my brothers. Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Az-Zubayr ibn al-Awwam, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Abdurrahman ibn Awf. Mountains. He's sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the mushrikun come and they start cursing Abu Bakr Siddiq, cursing his wife, cursing his sister, cursing his mother, all kinds of obscene language. He's sitting there quietly. Sabr. They said, Abu Bakr is not going to move like this. They start cursing Rasulullah and his family. At this, Abu Bakr Siddiq got up, enraged. As soon as he got up, the Prophet walked away. And he said, forget these people. Why am I wasting time responding to them? Let me go ask why my beloved left. So he ran to Rasulullah and asked him, what's the matter? Why did you leave? He said, it's... So long as you were sitting there, the angels were standing around us saying, Abu Bakr, ala al-haq, he's on the truth, he's on the truth, he's on the truth. As soon as you got up, they all flew away. And I don't sit where angels don't, are not in my company. Why did Abu Bakr Siddiq get up? From what he thought was the appropriate thing to do for Allah's deen. Right? Everybody knows that the man who loved the message of Allah sallallahu the most, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu on the Hijrah, Aisha radiallahu anha says when the Messenger of Allah said, he came mid-morning, he came to our house. Mid-morning. The sun was out and he came and he said to Abu Bakr, I've been given permission to migrate. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, he said, oh Messenger of Allah, why well, I have permission to, come to accompany you in the migration. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Sohbah. He said, you have been given permission. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu began to cry. He began to cry. Aisha radiallahu anha says that I had never seen a man crying out of happiness. There's a possibility now that he would be killed in the migration. But that did not worry him. That was his love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, when leadership was taken away, who was going to step up to fill the shoes of the Prophet ﷺ? The Ummah was left without a leader. And it would have been absolute chaos had one man not stepped up to the plate. Abu Bakr an, and decide to take that leadership, decide to put things in his own hands, decide to remind the Ummah that whoever used to worship Muhammad, know that Muhammad has passed away. But whoever worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then know that Allah is ever living and does not die. His complete name was Abdullah ibn Uthman ibn Amr ibn Amr al Qurashi. Now, all of these individuals had a noble status in the Quraysh tribe. And he actually was born two and a half years after the Prophet. In terms of his physical characteristics, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala was known to be someone who was very white in complexion, someone who was very skinny. He had this presence that demanded respect when he walked into a room. His father, we mentioned, was Uthman. 
and Uthman likewise had a kunya as well. His kunya was Abu Quhafa. Abu Quhafa did not go and accept Islam up and until the opening of Mecca. And 22 years later of giving da'wah, that is when his father actually accepted Islam when Mecca opened up. As were the mother of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, her name was Salma bint Sakhar. And she had the kunya of Ummul Khair. She actually accepted Islam very early on. Throughout his life, he got married four times. There are two of them in particular that you would want to familiarize yourselves with. The first one was Qatila, and the second one was Umm Ruman. As for Qatila, she was the mother of two of his children, two of them being Abdullah and Asma. As for Umm Ruman, she was the mother of Aisha radiallahu anha and the mother of Abdurrahman. Before Islam, he was the Prophet's friend, also with a very pure heart. In the narrations, he never drank alcohol even before Islam. He had a grudge. He had something against the idols also. He didn't feel comfortable. It didn't sit well with him to worship rocks and stone. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have never, throughout 23 years of da'wah, I have never called anyone to Islam, invited anyone to Islam, gave da'wah to anyone, except that he had a moment of hesitation, except Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, my friend, my companion. The second I called him to Allah, as soon as I finished my lines, as soon as I finished my da'wah, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, I testify that there's no true God except Allah, and I testify you as messenger of Allah. Never looked back, never doubted him, even in things logic refuses completely. Why was he given the nickname as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu? When people hesitated, this man was a rock. When people doubted, this man had no doubt, had firm yaqeen. One day, the non-believers of Quraysh, they come mocking Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and mocking the Prophet of Allah. They come to him, have you heard what your friend is saying nowadays? He goes, Khair, what has he said? What has Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? He goes, your prophet now, have you heard the news? Your prophet now is claiming that he was taken from his house in Mecca all the way to Masjid al-Aqsa in Asham, and then he rose, he, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him all the way to the seventh heaven and then came back all in one night. Come on, Abu Bakr, are you still going to stick stones by him? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, without thinking, without hesitation, if it's true what you're saying, and he said so, I believe him. I believe him. How come? Where is the logic? How can you believe such a story? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, I believe him in things that are harder than this. I believe him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the news of the heavens. Allah sends Jibreel to him. And I believe him. I won't believe him in a little trip. If he said so, he is saying the truth. From that day onwards, he was called Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now this title of a Siddiq is the greatest title an individual can be given after the title of prophethood. One day the Prophet ﷺ was on Mount Uhud with Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman. And Mount Uhud actually started to tremor and started to shake. The Prophet ﷺ in wanting Mount Uhud to calm down and to stop shaking, he said, O Uhud, calm down and tame yourself. For indeed upon you are a prophet, is a nabi, a siddiq, and two shuhada. Look at the ranks, my brothers. Look how the earth and the creation of Allah is subjugated to those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another virtue of Abu Bakr was the degree of his trustworthiness or honesty when it came to doing business. And you'll see that the reason behind this was due to his honesty. Back then, when you did business with someone, you were unable to control whether they were going to be honest or treacherous with you. There was no concept of police that if they cheat you, you know, they'll imprison the other individual. 
but rather you were taking a great risk doing business with someone. And people actually preferred doing business with Abu Bakr because they felt safe and they felt content and they knew that they would not be cheated when they did business with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And due to that honesty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to bless his wealth time after time after time up and until his death. Once my brothers and my sisters, in the early stages of da'wah, Abu Bakr and the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were in the Kaaba, in the Haram. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started calling to Allah until the leaders of Quraysh got agitated, frustrated, and they started, they were about to attack Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and abuse him and harm him. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu could not handle this. Maybe he wasn't big in body, but his heart had iman and belief that would shake mountains. Readiness to sacrifice anything to protect the Prophet of Allah. So he ran, he jumped at them all and defended the Prophet of Allah with his own body. They left the Prophet and they started bashing Abu Bakr hours and hours, hitting him collectively. They took off the shoes and started hitting his face radiallahu anhu until he was left by the afternoon a dead corpse on the floor. No one knew whether he was alive or dead. Finished. They carried him home, my brothers and my sisters. Dead. No one knows, waiting. His mother, non-Muslim at the time, her name was Umm Al-Khair. She saw her son in such state. His father, Abu Quhafa, non-Muslim at the time, saw his son in this state. All day, day long, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was unconscious. And then, Slowly, slowly, he started opening his eyes, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When he started opening his eyes, all the family came closer. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, in such a state between death and life, the first words he uttered, how is the Prophet of Allah? Can you imagine the feelings of the father? Can you imagine what went for his mother's heart and mind? They got very frustrated. Again, you say, Muhammad, is that all you care about in the world? You nearly died. His father left the room from frustration and all the other cousins. He was left alone with his mother. Umm al-Khair, trying to, you know, comfort him. Please stop, worry about yourself. Only one sentence on his tongue. How is Muhammad? Is he safe? She goes, I don't know your friend. And I don't want to know him. He goes to her, please, my mom. Please, my mom, I will not eat or drink. I will not move an inch unless and until I see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with my eyes. She goes to her, I don't know where he is. I can't take you there. He goes to her, go to Umm Jamil, Umar ibn Khattab's sister, Fatima bint al-Khattab. Go there, bring her and ask her. She went. Umm Jamil was a Muslim in secret. The sister of Umar radiallahu anhu was a Muslim in secret. No one knew of her Islam. She went and asked her, do you know anything about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? She goes, I don't know Muhammad and I don't know your son. She goes, please come here. The man is sitting on his deathbed, please come. So Umm Jamil, she comes with Umm Al-Khayr. She enters Abu Bakr. When she sees his state, she starts crying radiallahu ta'ala anna straight away. She goes, what humans can do this to a man? He goes to her by Allah. I will not eat and drink until I see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he is safe. He is safe, don't worry. He goes, no food, no water, I have to see him. They waited until it became dark. And then they carried this man who can't walk on his own. Two ladies carried Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He is crawling weakly until they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he started crying and all the Muslims started crying. What kind of love did this man have for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in Mecca. Him and his companions persecuted year in, year out until the order came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with migration. Other Sahaba migrated, saved the skin, and ran to Medina. But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu waited. He stayed. 
every single day, he would wait for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates and says, the Prophet of Allah used to visit Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu every single day. Sometimes twice a day, but in certain times, except on the day of migration, he came to our house in a wee time. We're not used to him coming at that time. When he came, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says to him, Khair ya Rasulullah, what's on? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Abu Bakr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me permission to migrate to Medina. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu grabbed onto Rasulullah and screamed, please take me as your companion or prophet of Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Naam. Yes, Abu Bakr, we are together. Aisha says, radiallahu anha, until that moment of my life, I didn't believe that a man could cry his eyes off in happiness. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu started crying in happiness because the Prophet of Allah will take him on a trip. Most likely both of them will not live in. But he wanted to die with him radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then when the migration takes place, the narration mentioned sometimes Abu Bakr would run to the front of the Prophet ﷺ, sometimes to the side, sometimes to the other side, sometimes to the back. And the Messenger of Allah said, he said, what are you doing Abu Bakr? And Abu Bakr said, oh Messenger of Allah, when I think somebody might just attack you from the front, I run to the front. Then I look around, maybe some, you may be vulnerable from the back. So I run to the back. You know, this was his love. And then when they went into the cave, he said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, allow me, allow me to go into the cave and clean the cave up. You know what Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu would say? Umar, Amir al-Mu'mineen, a man who became the most powerful man on the face of this earth. You know what Umar would say? He said, I would give the actions of my entire life for a day and a night in the life of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. What was that day? That day was the cave. That day was the cave. I would give my entire life. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu goes into the cave and he sees a number of holes and he takes off his garment and he rips the garment up into small pieces and he covers the holes with the pieces of garment. But his garment runs out and there's still one hole which he has no which he has no garment or no pieces of fabric cloth to cover. And then he, and then he asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come in. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes into the cave. And after a while the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants to rest. So Abu Bakr Siddiq Allah says to the Messenger of Allah, he says, Oh Messenger of Allah, place your head upon my thigh. So the Messenger of Allah placed his head upon the thigh of Abu Bakr Siddiq Allah And Abu Bakr with the other foot, he covered the hole. So if there's any serpent or any, any spider, it cannot come out. And whilst Abu Bakr is in this state, with the head of the Messenger of Allah on his thigh, there's a snake in the hole. And that snake bites the foot of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And now Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is going through this excruciating pain. But he doesn't wake the Messenger of Allah up. He doesn't wake him up. He leaves him. And he, but he can't bear the pain. So his tears begin to roll down his cheek. And they fall on the cheek of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the Messenger of Allah wakes up. And he sees Abu Bakr going through this pain. And he says to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Why didn't you wake me up? And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, The Messenger of Allah, I didn't want to. They inconvenience you. But he, his, his love for the Messenger of Allah wasn't just a passive love. It was a love which inspired him. And even in the journey of Hijrah, when they came to the house of Umm Ma'bad radiallahu ta'ala anha, and they had had nothing to drink for days. And finally, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu are going to get a chance to drink some milk, to, to satisfy their thirst, to satisfy their hunger. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, and so my beloved one drank until I became full, until my thirst was quenched, just by looking at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa drinking. 
Yes, Abu Bakr loved the Prophet so much that it transcended human norms. SubhanAllah. Once an incident, a funny incident happened in Islam. It's actually funny. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Umar had a bit of a conflict. Like all of us do. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said something to Umar that wasn't pleasant. So Umar radiallahu anhu didn't respond. They left. Abu Bakr asked Umar for an apology and Umar didn't respond. But Abu Bakr ran to Rasulullah. In the narration, he grabbed his thawb up high until his knees nearly showed. He's running to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Rasulullah, this and this happened and Umar radiallahu anhu would not accept my apology. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became furious. Umar radiallahu anhu later, he went to see Abu Bakr in his house, he didn't find him. So he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw him and Abu Bakr was there. When, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Umar radiallahu anhu, his face started changing in anger. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu begged, fell on his knees, begging the Prophet of Allah, Oh Prophet of Allah, please don't be upset with him. Wallahi, it was my mistake. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, still in anger, said, Ya Umar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to you people. All of you said you're a liar, you're a liar. And this man said, you're saying the truth. And he supported me and comforted me with his money and his and everything. Leave my friend alone. Leave my companion alone. Don't upset him. After that day, no one in the companions dared to upset Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Even if Abu Bakr was in the wrong. <laughs> Another funny incident, you know. Rabi'a ibn Ka'b al-Aslami, you know the great, the great man from Ahl al-Suffa, the great companion who asked the Prophet of Allah to be with him in Jannah, in his rank. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, do a lot of sujood. If you want to be with me, you have to do a lot of work. You know, this man, Rabi'a ibn Ka'b, another similar incident. They had a bit of an argument, him and Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said something unpleasant to him. Abu Bakr regretted himself. He goes, please say to me like I said to you. Rabi'a said, Wallahi, I will not dare say this to you, Abu Bakr. He goes, I'm telling you, say it. He goes, no, I can't say something wrong. I will only say what is good. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ran angrily to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rabi'a ran after him, chasing him. The tribe of, the, the tribe of Rabi'a, they grabbed him. He said, are you serious? Abu Bakr is in the wrong and you are chasing him to apologize? Are you normal? He's the one in the wrong. Let him go complain. So he goes, Shh, please. Don't talk. Make sure he doesn't see you talking to me. If Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu sees you supporting me against him, maybe he'll get upset. Maybe he'll be angry. And if he gets angry, the Prophet of Allah will be angry. And if the Prophet of Allah will be angry, all of us will deserve the wrath of Allah. Please leave me alone. And then he ran. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had already arrived, complained to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabi'a came said, Ya Rasulullah, I will do anything, please. Abu Bakr wants me to say something unpleasant, I can't do it. He goes, you are right, Rabi'a, don't say anything, but say, Ya Allah, ya Allah forgive Abu Bakr and accept his apology. And later on, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, in a, in a beautiful narration, he'd say, in the presence of other people, speaking proudly of Abu Bakr, when Abu Bakr is next to him, no wealth ever benefited me in any way, shape or form in the way that the wealth of Abu Bakr benefited me. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he starts to cry when he hears that praise. And he says, what is it? My wealth and myself, do they not belong to you, Ya Rasulullah? This was the rank of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The Prophet of Allah told us, he informed us. Each one of us, his dream is to enter Jannah. You'd be lucky to get one door, a door of salah, a door of zakah and charity. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was once hearing the Prophet of Allah describing the doors of Jannah. He goes to him, O Prophet of Allah, is there a chance that someone can enter from many doors instead of one door? He goes, yes, yeah, Abu Bakr, and you are one of them. The eight doors of Jannah, my brothers and my sisters, the eight doors of Jannah will beg Abu Bakr on judgment day, 
to privilege them, to honor them by going through this door, not the other doors. Everyone fought for the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Amr ibn al-As one day, he goes up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you can imagine how embarrassing this is for a man. You know, he goes up to another man and he says, Ya Rasulullah, who is the most beloved to you? Who do you love the most? And Amr ibn al-As, he's just come back from a great mission and a great task and he thinks because he's completed this great mission and task successfully, that he's gonna say, Ya Amr, it's you that I love the most. This is the answer that he's hoping for. <laughs> So he asked the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, who is the most beloved to you? And the Prophet ﷺ, without surprise, he says, Aisha radiallahu anha. So then Amr says, no, 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 not, not out of the women, Ya Rasulullah, I'm talking about out of the men. So he's thinking, okay, now he's gonna mention me. Then the Prophet ﷺ goes on to mention her father, Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. Then he's like, okay, khalas, you know, Abu Bakr has this noble status, maybe I'll be second. So he says, Ya Rasulullah, then who? Then the Prophet ﷺ mentions Amr. And you can see his heart's like starting to sink right now. But he's like, let me give it one more chance. You know, maybe I'll be third. So then he says, then who, Ya Rasulullah? And then he mentions Uthman. And then Amr at this time is like, Khalas, you know, I don't want to embarrass myself anymore. <laughs> let me just end it there. The Prophet of Allah in the battle of Tabuk, the battle of hardship. Uthman is famous, radiallahu anhu, for doing the big job and the majority of work in spending his money for preparing this army, the army for the battle of Tabuk. But all Sahaba were encouraged. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, that's it, this is my opportunity. Today I will beat Abu Bakr. He thought within himself, he goes, I will give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet half my money. He counted all what he had and he halved it. He bought half his money to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Said, Ya Rasulullah, this is money for Sabilillah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Ya Umar, what did you leave for your family? He goes, the Prophet of Allah, I left an equal amount at home. Shortly after, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes with all his money. He took everything. He left nothing for his wife and children. And bought all his money and put it between the hands of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet of Allah asked him, O oh Abu Bakr, what have you left for your family? I left Allah and his Prophet for my family. Allah is enough for them. Allah will look after them. Three days before the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave his final khutbah. This was the final khutbah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended the pulpit. And he gave an example of a man who has been called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, oh, he has a choice to remain in this dunya. And he decides to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the other sahaba thought that this was just a mere parable. It was just an example. But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu understood that the message of Allah was referring to himself and he began to cry uncontrollably. And Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu anhu says, I saw this old man crying, Abu Bakr crying, and I couldn't understand why he's crying for. But he understood that the message of Allah is speaking about himself. He's speaking about himself. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi when he saw Abu Bakr crying, he said, Abu Bakr, calm down. Abu Bakr, calm down. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said an amazing thing in the tribute of Abu Bakr. If there was nothing else said regarding Abu Bakr, only this statement, it would have sufficed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever has done me a favor in this dunya, I have repaid their favor. As for Abu Bakr, Allah will repay him on the day of judgment. And then he said, if I was to take a friend, it would have been Abu Bakr Siddiq. But the brotherhood in Islam will suffice. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, all the doors to the masjid should be closed besides the door of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passes away and Abu Bakr is at his house of his wife and he hears and he comes into the masjid and the Sahaba are in a state of confusion. Why wasn't Abu Bakr crying on that day? Now it was turn for Abu Bakr to be the Khalif, to be the man, to lead the Muslims. And he goes into the house of Aisha radiallahu anha and he removes the cloth from the Mubarak face of the Prophet sallallahu and he kisses the forehead of the Prophet sallallahu He said, you are beautiful in life, O Messenger of Allah, and you are as beautiful in death. 
And then he came out. And he gave his private khutbah Umar ibn al-Khattab was saying, whoever says that the messenger of Allah is dead or is a manafiq, he's only gone like Musa went to see Allah, he will be back. He will be back. And he stood up and Abu Bakr radiallahu told Umar, he said, calm down, oh Umar, calm down. And Umar wasn't calming down. And then he gave his faith khutbah. He said, whoever worship Muhammad, then let him know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed on to his Lord. And whoever worships Allah, then let him know that Allah is alive and death does not befall him. But after all this love, after the unparalleled love, did he start mourning now for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? There was no inactive mourning. He got on with it. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu companions radiallahu anhu they gave them oath of allegiance because the prophet of allah hinted this while he was alive when he was sick sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to say abu bakr is the leader of your salat aisha radiallahu anha came to him ya rasul allah abu bakr is a soft man if he reads quran he starts crying so much people will not hear the quran how can he be the imam the prophet of allah got angry he should lead salah and then after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, Umar radiallahu anhu made the famous statement. He goes, the Prophet of Allah chose Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to be our leader in salat. Shouldn't we accept him to be our leader in worldly matters? The hardest two years Islam faced after the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hundreds of people started turning back, changing their path, leaving Islam, false prophets, you know, and false people started claiming that they're receiving revelation. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was so firm. He was so straightforward on the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He protected Islam because of him. Islam is established as we see it in our time. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Fifteen days before his death, he had made ghusl and was going out to the masjid uh, at the time of Fajr. And it was quite cold that day. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu actually got a cold. And that was what actually caused the death of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And something that's always pivotal to notice is that these luminaries of Islam, these great people of Islam, what were their last words? What were their farewell advice? What were their last conversations? And you know, just like how Aisha radiallahu anha was there when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, she was there when her father Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu passed away as well. And Aisha radiallahu anha, you know, she's there trying to console her father. She asks her father, you know, is there any last request that you want fulfilled? Is there anything that can be done? And Abu Bakr says, yes. He asks Aisha radiallahu anha, when did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam die? And uh, she said he died on a Monday. And it was Monday that very day. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he made dua at that time. And he said, Oh Allah, please let me die on the same day uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. The second request that he had made from Aisha radiallahu anha, he asked her, Oh Aisha, how did you bury the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And she said that we buried the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in three white garments without any turban. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu at that time he was already wearing a white garment. And he tells Aisha that, Oh Aisha, you know, on my garment is a stain. Wash that stain off of my garment and bury me in this very shroud with two other garments with it. When the Muslims found out about this, they said, Oh Abu Bakr, the Muslims now have wealth. Why do you not wear more luxurious clothes as you're about to be buried? And at this time he said, you know, the ones who are alive are more deserving of wearing these luxurious clothes. And he told her, Oh Aisha, that between you and me, I lived my life with the Prophet wasallam, and I would like to, to die with him as well. And bury me next to the Prophet wasallam. So that place was specified just for him. Now when it came to the last words of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Keeping in mind that he was an individual who was promised paradise from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, an individual whom the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said that if you were to weigh his iman against the iman of the whole world, the former would outweigh the latter. 
his last words passing away from this world were making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, oh Allah, let me die as a Muslim and reunite me with the righteous. Meaning, put me in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just as you had me in his company in this world. And that is how Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu passed away, the great Khalifa of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him and elevate his status and bring about the likes of him again. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته